Good morning, Andre. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? Absolutely fantastic. I got to thank you for this book because so much history has been lost since Jackie Robinson that we don't know how we got up to a Sammy Sosa. We don't know how we got up to a Ricky Henderson and baseball players such as that. That journey is lost in history, but not anymore. No, it's very true. A lot of people don't realize uh, the the sort of full breadth of Jackie Robinson's story. It generally starts and stops when he integrates the game of baseball in 1947. But there's a whole decade of not only his baseball career before he retires in 1957, but an enormous life after uh, he retires as a civil rights leader. And we really never see that piece of Jackie Robinson's story. We can just see him uh, doing some amazing things on the field, but the life that he lived uh, after retiring from baseball as a civil rights leader, a very prominent one, especially with Dr. King, um, it was it was substantial. And uh, frankly, him integrating baseball was probably the least important thing that he did and the legacy that he left behind. I talked with his daughter one time, and, and one of the things that, that we both agreed upon was that his, his passion for people and community was just mind-blowing, and so many people did not understand that about, about him in, in the game in his heart. Yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting because Jackie Robinson always had that in his heart. You know, when he integrated the game of baseball, it was by design that he would not speak out and speak up against discrimination racism and inequality he was you know uh, sort of uh, manufactured if you will in some way by branch ricky uh, to not fight back to not stand up against the racial uh, slurs and epithets that were being hurled at him on on the field but he always had this deep passion for uh civil rights and for human rights mm-hmm. on, a, on a whole so he finally got to really do that and you know so we see a little bit of it in his later career but we see it especially once he retires that he finally got the opportunity to do that and thankfully because of that he gave you know birth and 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 protection and support to this next wave of guys uh, namely in our film bill white bob gibson and kurt flood that he was there to support did he have the, have the opportunity to sit down with each of these players and say i realize that we came from the same baseball diamond but you're representing a generation you're representing people you need to be a representative more than just a player He did. He did. And there was so much more of it that we couldn't even put into the film. We just ran out of time, but, but he, we do have it in the film. I mean, he had a personal relationship with, with these players. We have a photo of him and Bob Gibson. We've got him, uh, you know, photos of him and Kurt Flood and and them standing up next to each other at the podium during a, you know, civil rights rally that Jackie Robinson had invited him and Bill White to. And so he was this this incredible mentor uh, and advocate and supporter. I mean, even down to to writing telegrams on their behalf to to get into the neighborhood that they wanted to live in, that they wanted to integrate, you know, of of, uh, of sending Bill White notes, you know, to, in support of him integrating the, the the housing for the players during spring training, you know, just then showing up where he was needed to, to march or to protest, showing up to, to Kurt Flood's court cases when he sued the, the league um, against the reserve clause. So Jackie was there. He was there in such a big way, and he just really doesn't get a lot of credit for that. And so we wanted to try to change that in the course of this film. It's almost like you've created beyond the vision, beyond beyond our personal baseball dreams and stuff like that. It, you're saying, look, there was a real guy that, that was here, and he still made a difference off from the baseball field, and that we out here as viewers can can look at that and say, well, I can do more as well. Yeah, that's that's my 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 hope is that viewers take that away because I mean another version, another name for this film, you know, was was going to potentially be Beyond Forty Two, oh, wow. you know, sort of after Jackie Beyond Forty Two, because he, it, because of what it is he did beyond just the 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 number on his back, uh, which has been retired officially and you know gets worn by all ball players. Um, during Jackie Robinson Day, April fifteenth, and uh, it was just the 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 triumphs that that he and the things he was able to achieve after he left the game off of the field. I mean, the last thing I'll say about this is that he was a player first and then became an activist. Mm-hmm. But the the wave of guys that came after him with Bill White, Bob Gibson, and Kurt Flood, this is the first time we're really seeing the combined player activists, the guys who are playing at the highest level on the field, but also. Um, you know, down in, in the deep south, 
marching and protesting against racial discrimination and inequality. And so Jackie Robinson gave birth to, to that uh, by virtue of his, his um, achievements. And we were able to, to really um, highlight that in this, in this movie. What's, what's very inspiring about this is I'm in the South. I, I know how the South has treated people and especially the, all the different sports players and stuff like that. But what's, mm-hmm. what's great about this is, is that when he was at, up there to bat, he, you, he, you, you couldn't read anything that that could have been negative going through his life, but he activated that energy after the game of baseball. He, he, beca- like you said, he became an activist, an activator in making sure that his community changed. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, they, we we show in this film Jackie giving um, speeches during the the civil rights movement. I mean, at at the request of of Dr. King, at the request of. Of, uh, of of other civil rights leaders that that he was allied with, um, and we don't really see that. We don't get to see that, and that's that was something I really wanted to highlight. It's kind of like we have the status quo understanding of Jackie Robinson, but he was such so much more than that, and mm-hmm. so much of his life beyond the game is exactly the legacy. What he did for others. How That's did, his legacy. How did sports fans see that new Jackie Robinson in the way that, you know, we all fall in love with the with the baseball legend, but all of a sudden he has a voice? Whoa, whoa, whoa where'd this come from? Well, that's that's a new piece of information that I had uh, discovered in this process with my team of researchers and just really that when Jackie Robinson, by the time he retired, was one of the most hated men in baseball, <laughs> but, you know, hated by hated by the villains that were that were hurling racial epithets at him, uh, you know, all day long while he was on the field, you know, because he finally stood up and spoke out because, because he finally was not going to, uh, you know, take, take these biased plays. He was not going to, you know, take these, these unjust calls that were happening in the game just because he was, it was a black man on the field. And, uh, and so he always had this great passion for civil rights and he finally was able to speak out about it toward the end of his, end of his career. And then finally, once he, he retired. And so, that's the Jackie Robinson that a lot of people don't know and have never heard the word Jackie Robinson being a hated man in baseball before. I mean, that was that was uh, all through the, the trades and, and articles written about it, which we were able to, to, to focus on, but really focus on the work that he did, which was extraordinary and, and something that we wanted to um, – to pay homage to the journey to gain access to all of this historic information. It, it, it has to serve as a teacher for future stories and stuff like that. What was that one thing that stood out that said, we've never tried this before to get the information, the history, but you know what, we're going to, we're going to work on it in the future as well. Yeah. So with, with history channel, who was our partner um, in this, they, they were, uh, and they, they embraced really so much of the, the vision that I had for this film from the beginning that uh, uh, I couldn't have asked for a better partner and supporter. I mean, and obviously in our, our executive producer, LeBron James, and then Stanley Nelson, who was also an executive producer, what we were able to do here is um, use so many of the, the, the tools that are in the filmmaker toolbox and elements, uh, such as animation. We have some in there. We have a uh, you know, heavy amount of archival footage and material that, that dates back uh, you know, uh, to the to the fifties and sixties, and and even before then, we have some fantastic interviews of, of modern day players, with Mookie Betts, and most oh recently uh, retired CC Sabathia. So many different elements that we were able to put together to tell this story, and I think audiences would really enjoy it. Did you document this? And the reason why I bring that up is because we we all fell in love with the Beatles' Get Back, with the story of music coming together. You, your journey of putting all of this together. There are so many people that are in hiding right now with their creativity that don't know how to grow their passion for baseball or civil rights and stuff like that. And yet you you have made this happen. We need to know your story as well. Oh, sure. Well, you know, my story is I, I'm a... Uh... You know, grew up in Ohio. Uh, went to went to school at Northwestern as an undergraduate, and went to Northwest. Or went to NYU to New York University as a, a grad student in film, and uh, and as a storyteller, as you know, started uh, uh, mainly as a writer and producer, and then eventually stepped into the director's chair. And as a storyteller, especially in the documentary space, uh, really feel an obligation to put these stories in their proper place. These stories, these incidents, these historic figures, put them in their proper place, give them their proper due. That was the case with 
my first film, uh, the one and only Dick Gregory about oh, the, the late great comedian. Yes. Uh, and the same, and the same thing here with after Jackie with a, a, a little bit of uh, information about Jackie Robinson that people have not heard. And a lot of information about these unsung heroes in the form of Bill White, Bob Gibson and Kurt Flood that people just haven't heard. So it, it's, it's been an honor. It's been fun. It's been a privilege. It's a lot of work. <laughs> uh, but at the, at the end of the day, um, you know, it's uh, we sort of let this chilled child out into the world for the for the world to see and and be able to enjoy. So I'm I'm glad that we finally got to the finish line. So how did these ideas come to you, such as after Jackie? I remember doing a a big big book on John Lennon, and the idea hit me while I was walking through a mall, mm-hmm. and I just wanted to argue with myself. No, 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 no. Did you find yourself in a struggle like that, or was like, okay, here we go? Yeah, well, you know, as a as a storyteller, you can relate that that these ideas sometimes just fall out of the sky. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I would say I would say most of my great ideas <laughs> happen in the shower where I can't write them down. Um, I've got to I got to keep repeating them to myself while I'm getting ready in the morning uh, until I can get to a place where I actually can try to write some of them down. So yeah, they come from multiple different multiple different places. I've I'm a, a fan of of all live sports, not just baseball. Um, and uh, but with baseball particularly, you can track the direct correlation of the history of baseball and the history of the United States, and you can you can really sort of put them side by side and 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 really sort of see the 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 progress or lack thereof that has occurred in the country uh, through the lens of baseball. And, and I think the tribalization of sports is kind of one of the only ways that we all, you know, bring people together, whether you're, you're black, white, Republican, Democrat, yeah. whatever it is, everybody comes together, you know, through, through, through sports. And with baseball, you just have that, that parallel where we're able to see both the historical aspect and the game at the same time. And it, it was, it was an opportunity that just really made sense and something I wanted to, to bring to the world. Well, inside your heart, uh, Paul Harvey must have been sitting next to you because, you know, when, when you watch after Jackie, I can just I can just hear Paul Harvey say, and now, you know, the rest of the story. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. That's and there's so much more. This could easily be in a <laughs> six part documentary. You know, we had to squeeze it into two hours, but there's so much more, which always breaks, breaks the filmmaker's heart, breaks my heart. You know, the things that we have to leave on the cutting room floor, but you know, thankfully we have YouTube. That's what, Oh my God, you're so true. Please, please come back to the show anytime in the future. Andre, the door is always going to be open for you. Well, thank you so much for having me. It was great talking to you. I, I, I'll take you up on that offer. You be brilliant then. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Have a great day.